The space world has never been this competitive. Every year, new companies enter the race, and existing ones are constantly building new rockets, spacecraft, and technologies. From satellite launches to space stations, the demand is growing fast. In this packed and rapidly evolving industry, one of the most promising companies over the past few years has been Sierra Space. And for a long time, we've all been waiting for one thing from them the Dream Chaser space plane. A small winged spacecraft designed to land on runways and be reused again and again. It's been in development for years, and recently, they've finally come close to launching it. The spacecraft is complete. Testing has been passed, and it's even moved to the launch site. But once again, there's a delay. Dream Chaser's first operational version is called Tenacity. It's a reusable lifting body space plane, about 9 meters long, with folding wings that allow it to fit inside standard rocket fairings. Unlike capsules that land with parachutes, Dream Chaser will glide back to Earth and land on a runway, just like an airplane. This offers huge benefits for bringing back time-sensitive experiments, medical samples, or fragile equipment from space. Sierra Space is building Dream Chaser under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services to contract. It's been awarded at least seven cargo missions to the International Space Station. The vehicle itself is designed to carry over five tons of pressurized and unpressurized cargo. And with the addition of the Shooting Star cargo module, the total capacity increases to around 12 tons. This module is detachable and burns up in the atmosphere after use, allowing for safe waste disposal. The spacecraft uses non-toxic propulsion, a combination of propane and nitrous oxide, powering in-house developed Vortex engines. The benefit of using these storable green propellants is that they're easier to manage on the ground and safer for repeated operations. On top of that, the spacecraft is covered in thousands of silica-based heat shield tiles, designed to survive re-entry temperatures of up to 1,600 degrees Celsius. Each tile can be reused up to 15 times. After years of development, Tenacity completed final assembly in 2023 and was sent to NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio for qualification testing. It went through acoustic, vibration, thermal vacuum, and electromagnetic compatibility tests, all of which are needed to ensure it survives launch, orbit, and re-entry. Dream Chaser passed those tests and was moved to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it's now waiting to be integrated with its launch rocket. That rocket, however, is the problem. Dream Chaser is scheduled to fly aboard United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket, a brand new launch vehicle that's still going through its early certification flights. Unfortunately, this choice of launcher has caused Sierra Space significant trouble. The Vulcan rocket has already experienced multiple delays and technical issues, and one of its first flights suffered an upper-stage anomaly that pushed back the timeline for all upcoming missions. As a result, Dream Chaser is now stuck behind two high-priority U.S. Space Force missions, USSF-106 and USSF-87. These government payloads are considered top priority, and Dream Chaser won't launch until they're complete, possibly pushing its maiden flight into 2025. Sierra Space's dependence on ULA has clearly backfired. While Vulcan is expected to become a reliable rocket over time, it's currently unproven and low frequency. And this isn't the first time Sierra Space has been forced to delay Dream Chaser because of launch issues. The spacecraft was originally supposed to fly as early as 2022, but shifting launch schedules and incomplete Vulcan development have pushed that date again and again. The partnership with ULA might have made sense when both companies were aligned under the same parent, Lockheed Martin and Boeing's joint venture, but in practice this has severely restricted Dream Chaser's ability to get off the ground. The irony is that Dream Chaser is ready. Its systems, including avionics, environmental controls, propulsion, heat protection, and power distribution, have all been installed, tested, and validated. Fueling trials have been completed. Sierra Space has rehearsed integration procedures, practiced ground operations, 
and even conducted simulated launches and landings. All major pre-flight steps are done. The spacecraft has been moved to Kennedy Space Center, where it now waits, not for a technical issue, but for a rocket. Sierra Space is also building a second Dream Chaser vehicle. It may serve as a backup cargo spacecraft or as the base for the upcoming crew variant. That version, which is designed to carry up to seven astronauts, would require more than just life support systems. It would need NASA's human rating certification, an abort system for launch emergencies, flight control redundancy, and months of additional testing. The company hasn't published a launch target for that version, but it's already being designed and partially assembled. Given how much trouble Vulcan has caused already, many have questioned why Sierra Space hasn't turned to a more reliable launch partner. And one name comes up every time. SpaceX. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has become the gold standard in orbital launches. In 2023 alone, it launched 96 times. And in the first quarter of 2024, it had already launched over two dozen more. It holds the world record for the most launches by a single rocket family in a year and has completed over 300 successful missions. More importantly, SpaceX has demonstrated an incredibly high success rate with more than 200 consecutive successful flights and offers short turnaround times between missions, something Vulcan cannot currently match. If Sierra Space had partnered with SpaceX instead of ULA, Dream Chaser might have already flown. Falcon 9 has a proven ability to carry both crew and cargo to the International Space Station and other destinations. It launches from both Kennedy Space Center and Vandenberg Space Force Base, offering flexibility in terms of launch location. It's also used by companies like Axiom Space, which relies on SpaceX for private astronaut missions, and Vast Space, which is planning its own space station logistics using Falcon 9 launches. Sierra Space could follow a similar path. In fact, partnering with SpaceX could offer them several strategic advantages beyond just reliability. First, it would allow Dream Chaser to decouple its success from the slow rollout of Vulcan. Second, it would give them faster access to launch slots, since SpaceX launches nearly every week. Third, it would reduce mission risk, because Falcon 9 is a proven vehicle with a high success rate and minimal failure history. One example of this success is Commercial Resupply Services program itself. SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft has flown dozens of cargo missions to the International Space Station since 2012 with a near-perfect record. Even its crewed version, Crew Dragon, has now carried astronauts on over 10 missions safely. The operational experience, track record, and support infrastructure SpaceX provides is unmatched in the industry. For Sierra Space, this could mean faster launches, less waiting, and a greater ability to scale their operations. They wouldn't have to wait for another company's rocket to clear government or internal issues. They could build Dream Chaser, book a launch with Falcon 9, and fly, just like Axiom does with Crew Dragon. This move would make Dream Chaser more competitive, especially if the company wants to serve commercial stations or international partners. Although Dream Chaser is facing several setbacks, especially with its launch schedule, it still looks far more promising compared to some of its competitors, particularly Blue Origin. Despite being in the space game almost as long as SpaceX, Blue Origin has made very little actual progress when it comes to orbital launches. In all of 2023, Blue Origin launched just one mission, and that was a suborbital New Shepard flight. For 2024, as of now, they still haven't launched anything to orbit. Their heavy-lift rocket, New Glenn, remains in development with no confirmed operational flights, and their cadence continues to lag far behind industry standards. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.